Hey guys, welcome to the channel. My name's Dana with the OT Guide. Today's video is all about supplementing with melatonin, specifically supplementing melatonin with children who struggle with sleeping. This video was inspired by an episode from the Huberman Lab. Its host, Andrew Huberman, is a neurobiologist and neuroscientist, and he's a professor at the Stanford School of Medicine, and he creates content every day that's free that discusses uh, health and wellness. If you haven't checked out the Huberman Lab, yet, make sure you go check it out. So what is melatonin? Melatonin is a hormone. It is created in the pineal gland in our brains, and it is secreted at night to trigger our bodies to get sleepy. Melatonin supplements that you find in your health food store or a local nutrition store, that is just a synthetic version of the melatonin hormone that our body naturally produces. People supplement with melatonin because it helps you fall asleep more quickly, and it can be an effective solution for certain sleep issues. And it can be particularly helpful for students who have developmental delays or disabilities that are known to negatively interfere with sleep. So now let's jump into why I recommend being very cautious and very wary um, having your child supplement with melatonin. So while it helps kids fall asleep more quickly, it doesn't help it doesn't help people stay asleep. Melatonin levels in the blood peak after two hours or so, and then after that, they decline. And so kids will often take melatonin at night and then they wake up in the middle of the night and they're unable to fall back asleep. The second reason you have to be careful giving your child uh, melatonin, synthetic melatonin, is here in the United States, melatonin is considered a dietary supplement, which means there's no uh, regulation by the FDA. There's really no oversight into what is actually being put into these melatonin supplements. In other countries, some other places, you actually have to get a prescription to supplement with melatonin, but not here in the United States. According to Dr. Matthew Walker's book, Why We Sleep, there's actually evidence that dosage of melatonin varies from 15% of what's listed on the bottle to 400 times more than what's listed on the bottle. Another reason to be cautious with melatonin is it's often misadvertised. It's often misbranded as just a way to enhance your sleep or get better sleep. And this is dangerous because melatonin is a hormone. It should be taken seriously and it's not just something, you know, we should have, we should take ourselves or have our children take as a way to get even better sleep. Melatonin supplements do have side effects. Um, they're pretty minor, but they include mood swings, headaches, grogginess. Typically, these symptoms do go away with discontinuation, but still, it's something to be taken seriously. But the biggest reason, in my opinion, to be cautious with melatonin is that it can affect puberty-related hormones. And this is how it works. When we wake up in the morning, we release pulses of cortisol. Cortisol signals our body to get up, start moving, get our bodies to work. It also cues our body to start a 12 to 14 hour timer. And after those 12 to 14 hours, our body is then gonna release melatonin, which makes us sleepy. Cortisol is the wakefulness signal and melatonin is the sleepiness signal. In kids, this works a little bit differently. Kids release melatonin periodically throughout the day, whereas adults, we just release it at night when it gets dark. Melatonin in kids actually prevents the, the start of puberty. It shuts down those puberty hormones. That's why it's released throughout the day. Once kids release melatonin exclusively at night, this starts the onset of puberty. If we give children synthetic melatonin, this is changing that entire system. Long-term use of melatonin in children may delay their sexual maturation. This happens because giving your kids synthetic uh, melatonin at night would be disrupting their natural decline in melatonin levels. Research in this area is not completely conclusive. That being said, if you're taking hormonal supplements, theoretically that is going to affect hormonal development. So I have a couple of takeaways. My first takeaway is taking melatonin supplements or giving those supplements to your children, it's a big deal and it should never be a standalone solution to sleep difficulties. It should be used in collaboration um, with behavioral strategies like timing specific light exposure, uh, creating a good bedtime routine, promoting sleep hygiene, and it should also be used in collaboration with your child's pediatrician.
All in all, I don't think supplementation of melatonin in kids is something that should be done often. It should be done in very, very rare cases. Again, in collaboration with your child's doctor. At the end of the day, you have to weigh the pros and cons. Sleep is the foundation for absolutely everything. And if your child is unable to sleep and melatonin is the only thing you found that helps them, you gotta do what you gotta do. Anyway, I hope this video was helpful for you all. If you guys have any questions, comments, or concerns, as always, please comment below. Uh, if you've not subscribed to my channel, but you like my resources, please subscribe to show your, report, your support. And I will see you guys here next time. Bye.